If you've tried to build a smart home, then you've probably found out that things can get expensive pretty quickly. Well, today I'm going to show you how to build a smart home with just $300. I'm going to show you how to build it from the ground up, what things you can get for that money, and also what automations you can create with it as well. And if you're a bit more advanced or a bit more technical, then I'm also going to show you another option which allows you to create your Wallace and Gromit style smart home. I'll show you again what you can get to lay the foundation for a good smart home going forwards that you can build on in the future. So let's dive in. So if you want to keep things simple and don't want to keep tweaking things and fixing things, then you're probably going to need to choose an ecosystem and its respective hub. That's not quite the case anymore with Matter coming along, but generally speaking it is, and that's something for another video. In this video, we're going to be assuming that you don't have any smart devices already, but if you do already have some smart devices like voice assistants or some smart switches, then they're probably going to integrate and you're going to be able to use them. For this example, I've chosen an Acara hub and Acara devices. The main reason for this is, is because in my opinion, they're quite aesthetically pleasing and they're quite reasonably priced as well. And also I found that they're really reliable. I've been using them for over five, six years now, and I'm really happy. To build this smart home list, I've used the prices from AliExpress because they're often the cheapest, but they do fluctuate quite a lot as well. So you might get something cheaper and some things more expensive than what I've listed. So what you get for your $300 is an Acara M2 hub, which is the brain of your smart home. It's got quite a few features and I'll come on to that later and it can do some automations as well. But the main thing to note is, is that this is going to act as your main Zigbee coordinator for your smart home. And then all of the other Zigbee devices are going to connect to this. I base my model on a two bedroom home with an entrance hall, a kitchen diner, a living room for the main living space, and then a landing, a bathroom and two bedrooms. I've chosen seven smart wall switches and there's two main reasons for this. The first one is, is that they can act as what's called Zigbee routers, which basically creates a mesh Zigbee network across your whole home. And by having one of these in each room, which is what I've selected, should create a strong network, which means that you can then have sensors in any of these rooms. And the second thing, of course, is, is that it allows you to remotely control your lights in each room. And we'll get onto that more in a minute when we look at the automations that you can do. Now on to the other things that you can buy with your remaining cash. I've chosen four window and door sensors by Acara as well, four motion sensors, which are PIRs, and also a temperature and humidity sensor and a wireless button as well. Firstly, let's quickly talk about setting up the devices, and then I'm going to talk about some good automations that you can set up from day one with these devices. The first thing you're going to want to do is set up the Acara Hub. So you're going to need to download the Acara Home app onto your phone, and then follow the instructions. Please open the Acara Home app. I recommend plugging in a network cable rather than connecting via Wi-Fi, as it will probably be a little bit more stable. As I mentioned earlier, this is just one example of an ecosystem. There are other ones out there as well, such as Homey Pro and Samsung Smart Things. They're also Zigbee capable, and also some of them can do Z-Wave as well. Also, at time of recording, the Acara M3 hub is due out within the next couple of months, so it might be worth waiting for that if you can afford probably the additional cost. You will then want to install all of your smart light switches so that it creates a good connection to the hub, meaning that when you connect your sensors, your sensors will also have a good connection to the hub. Depending on the region that you live in in the world, then obviously the wiring and also the sockets can be different. So just bear this in mind that you might need to buy some slightly different switches to the ones that I selected. Once that you're happy that your switches are working correctly, both by physically pressing the button and from within the Acara Home app, then you can officially say that you've got a smart home. Now go and place your other sensors around the house where you're going to have them permanently. For example, your PIRs in the rooms that you want to automate your lights. Make sure that they're in the location where they are going to be permanently, because this will ensure that it gets a good connection from day one when you set them up. For the devices I picked within the $300 budget, you'll be able to do the following automations. When leaving the house, you'll be able to turn off all of your lights using the Acara app. You can also create an automation for it to happen automatically based on geolocation of the phone. Unfortunately, this only works for one phone at the moment. So if you've got a family and you leave the house, this is not going to be ideal because the lights are going to turn off on them. Another option, which I would say is the best option, is to have a smart button by the front door, which people can press, which will turn the lights off automatically. 
I didn't suggest this as the first option because we've only bought one smart button within the budget and we're going to use that for the next automation that I'm going to talk about. If you have a standard doorbell and you don't want a video doorbell, then you could attach one of these smart buttons to your front door. And then when visitors press it, it could trigger a sound on the Akara hub because the Akara Hub has got some built-in options for some different sounds. Now the next automation, in my opinion, is a must, and that is setting up a house alarm using the four window and door sensors that we've bought as part of the budget. So what you need to do is, is you want to put these on all of your exterior doors, and then you can create an automation in the Akara Home app so that when these exterior doors are opened at night time, then it'll actually trigger a different alarm sound on your Akara Hub. You could also use the house alarm for when you're outside of the house. You could set up the automation to send a notification to your phone as well as triggering the alarm on the hub. Now that you have sensors installed on your doors, you might as well make good use of them. And so another automation you could do is you could have it so that when you open your front door and it's night time, then it turns on the light in the hall automatically for you. So if you're coming home and you've got your hands full, then it's nice and easy because you don't have to try and scramble around for the light switch. At this point, we haven't used the PIRs yet, but the use for those should be fairly obvious. You want to place them in rooms where you want the lights to turn on automatically when you walk into the room. These also have light sensors, which is really great because it means that you can do it so that they only turn the lights on when it's dark at night time. And the final sensor that we haven't talked about yet is the temperature and humidity sensor. You could install this in your bathroom and then you could have, instead of a single light switch, you could have a double light switch, which controls your extractor fan and your light and then when the humidity rises you can get it to automatically turn on the extractor fan and then when it goes down again you can get it to automatically turn off so this would be really great if you're having a shower because you don't need to remember to turn it on and off each time as you can see with just these few sensors you can create quite a few automations and the great thing is you can just add to this over time so as you get some more money you could just buy a few more sensors for 10 or 20 dollars and then expand your smart home the next purchase that I would recommend is buying some flood sensors. This is because these can pay back in just one incident. We actually had an incident whereby the freezer decided to defrost itself in the middle of the night. And so we would have lost our whole freezer full of food, but instead we managed to get up and save the food. Now, of course, if you have a bigger home, you're probably going to need more sensors. But I think for $300, this is a really good starting point. And you could just choose to install these sensors in some of your rooms and then expand it over time. Now for option two. So if you really want to control your smart home, then you're probably going to start reaching the limits of some of these smart home platforms. And this is where Home Assistant comes in. It's a free open source platform and it integrates with so many different devices. So this is what we're going to talk about now. And I've chosen some very similar devices, but as you'll see later, you can also choose some cheaper devices as well. So for this example, the main change I've made is I've swapped out the Akara Hub and instead we've got a second hand mini PC and we've got a Sonoff dongle which will be used for the Zigbee devices. You actually get a little bit less for your money with this option, but it makes it more expandable over time. Also, when you install the Home Assistant, you're probably going to find that it's going to discover all sorts of smart devices around your home that you've forgotten you even had. For example, it probably pick up smart TVs and maybe even your router. You could also go with a Raspberry Pi instead of a mini PC, but actually going the second hand route means that you actually get more for your money. For example, I've got this Dellwise 5060 and it only cost me around $40, whereas a Raspberry Pi is going to cost you more than that. To fit within the budget, I chose a Sonoff dongle, but actually I would probably recommend the Home Assistant Sky Connect instead. This is because it's developed by Home Assistant and so it's likely to be more compatible going forwards. It also supports thread out the box without having to flash any custom firmware. With this option you're going to be able to do similar automations to what I mentioned earlier but in addition to that you're probably going to be able to do some automations with the other smart devices that it's going to discover around your home as well and also the benefit of this option is is that you're going to be able to connect other sensors that are not Akara ones and if you look at AliExpress you will find a whole plethora of these that can be really cheap. If you are going to consider buying some random Zigbee sensors from AliExpress, then I recommend that you go on the internet first and see what other people have to say about them. Because the most important thing in a smart home is reliability. And the last thing you want is to buy some cheap sensors and they stop working or only work intermittently. That's really going to annoy you and your family. 
I can't list all of the challenges you're going to have when trying to build your smart home, but one of the things worth mentioning is when you're selecting your smart switches, you're going to want to ensure that you've got a neutral wire behind your switches. And if you haven't, it's going to determine which ones you can choose. If you choose ones which don't have a neutral, then these aren't going to act as Zigbee routers. And this means that your network is not going to be as strong around your house. There is an option here whereby you can buy a few smart plugs instead, and these will act as Zigbee routers. These are a fairly good, cheap option instead. Another thing to bear in mind is that accessing Home Assistant from outside your home either comes with a cost or comes with complexity. So you're going to need to choose whether you want to read some documentation and try and do some things yourself with SSL certificates or DuckDNS, or an even better option is sign up to Home Assistant Cloud. This does cost a small monthly amount, but it's really reliable and it supports the project. Once you have Home Assistant Cloud set up, then it makes it really straightforward to access all of your devices from outside your network, wherever you are in the world. If you want to learn more about Home Assistant and Zigbee devices, then I've got a Zigbee playlist. I've also got a ESP Home playlist on how to create your own sensors. And I've also got a playlist with all of the Home Assistant releases that are done every month. So check those out if you're interested. Well, that's it for today, so please consider subscribing if you haven't already, liking the video, and thanks until next time.